Murdoch's Music Minute, the ultimate place for coolness, but also for great feelings when it comes to the nicest side issue in the world, pop and rock music from the past. And speaking of the past, do you remember the 1980s? A wonderful time for pop music or absolute hell for decent rock music, depending which side of the fence you were on. Main exhibit for everything that went horribly wrong in popular music during that plastic decade are bands like Ultravox. To those 20% of viewers who haven't run away now, welcome to the year 1982. Today's album review contains 80s synthesizers and 80s synthesizers. Yes, indeed, this Music Minute deals with Quartet, the sixth studio album by none other than Ultravox. Ultravox will forever be seen as that ultimate 1980s synth-pop band. The roots of the group, however, lie in the mid-70s, when Ultravox started as a project by arts college student Dennis Lee, better known as John Fox. The group went through several name changes until settling with Ultravox for their debut album in 1976. The early music of Ultravox was heavily inspired by glam and art rock of Roxy Music and experimental crowd rock. Fox and co. combined those elements with the new sound of punk, creating a quite unique but commercially unsuccessful blend. Two more unsuccessful albums followed, oscillating between punk, art rock and gradually more and more electronic sounds. Ultravox thus became pioneers of the UK synth and new wave scene. With a lack of success and tensions within the band, Fox left Ultravox in early 1979 and went on to pursue an artsy solo career, exploring the deeps of dark synth wave sounds. The remaining band members now were without a singer and a record contract. This was not the end for Ultravox, though. Busying himself with other musical projects, keyboardist Billy Curry met Mitch Ewer while both were working in the project Visage, best known for the new romantics anthem Fate to Grey. Ewer had some mild mainstream credits to his name and was willing to join a regrouped Ultravox. It is not surprising that the sound of Ultravox became slicker, more accessible and radio-friendly. Synths and pop melodies dominated now, and on top of it, Ewer's clear tenor vocals. Their first album with him as frontman already spawned their biggest hit single, the melancholic, slightly dark, but also iconic Vienna. From now on, Ultravox enjoyed chart successes in the UK, selling out bigger and bigger tours and also becoming the epitome for everything allegedly serious music fans and critics hated about anthemic, melodramatic 80s pop. Came 1982 and the band was at a peak of popularity, about to record their sixth studio release. The career of Ultravox was exploding by 1982 and for their sixth studio release, they brought in the real big guns, namely ex-Beatles producer George Martin. Yes, that George Martin. And if I didn't know it, I would never have guessed that the album Quartet uh, was produced by George Martin. You Actually, you don't really hear it. it it's not a Beatlesque psychedelic experience. Quartet um, is pure new wave of the early 1980s. I don't know who dragged Martin into the studio or who bribed him, um, or maybe he indeed uh, saw something in Ultravox uh, because he has gone on record stating that Ultravox to him was one of the most musical and musically talented bands 
uh, of the whole pop scene back in the early 80s in the UK. The album artwork comes in a neo-modernist, very clear-cut style that presents a strange Mediterranean or vaguely Roman minimalist architecture style, but also with a band logo that resembles the sign of the secret Freemason society. It's all very minimalist and at the same time quite pompous. And that might be um, a quite fitting summary of Ultravox and their music in general. To be honest, I've got no idea why this album is titled Quartet. It wasn't the fourth album. Um, it features nine tracks, so the number of tracks cannot be divided by four. Um, maybe it's because Ultravox had four band members, but uh, that's not a very uh, profound theory of mine. If you know more about the story behind the album title, uh, let me know in the comments. Enlighten me, Ultravox fans and music specialists. I'm happy to learn more about this. On to the music. The first track is Reap the Wild Wind. Uh, it was also released as a single and was the most successful single taken from this album. It is a very catchy and upbeat introduction to Quartet. Of course, the all-dominating synths and keyboards are already present on this first track. Um, the lyrics are rather vague phrases that uh, don't seem to be really connected but sound very good. Uh, very often in those days Mitch Hughes' lyrics uh, rather seemed to be about conveying a certain atmosphere uh, without um, really forming cohesive meaningful poetry. To me this is one of the best Ultravox singles out there. Take my hand and give me your friendship. I'll take my time so you the slow reply. The second song is called Serenade. It's got a driving, dramatic beat and synth soundscape to it. And it's about... I don't really know. I don't even think the band really knew. But it all, again, sounds very important and dramatic and well done. However, the title, or the music, actually seems to contradict the title. A serenade, and uh, I've looked it up before, is either an orchestral suite of dance pieces or um, a, a light upbeat, entertaining piece of music that is performed in the open air, uh, usually in the summertime. This clearly is not what the sound of Serenade by Ultravox uh, conveys to me. However, um, this is a really cool track and, as far as I'm concerned, should have been a single. Serenade! This is followed then by Mine for Life, a song that has got an equally dramatic, slightly gloomy atmosphere. Also, one can hear guitars on this track, disclosing Ultravox's roots in rock and punk music. The lyrics describe different snapshot type scenes, and the song could be about maybe um, imprisonment or espionage or a Cold War Berlin, maybe. The final song on the A side is called Hym, and it's exactly that. It comes with solemn lyrics and a pathos filled hymnal chorus, and uh, actually should be dreadful new wave kitsch but somehow fulfills its mission. It's the catchiest song 
of the album and I cannot help myself but I thoroughly enjoy this one. Uh, it was uh, by the way also chosen as a single and um, I think it's easy to see why. <laughs> Side 2 starts with the third single choice of the album, Visions in Blue. It's a melancholic ballad, again fraught with meaning in the lyrics. It features pseudo-classical piano playing and of course the omnipresent synthesizers. Not the best choice for a single, but this is classic new wave slash synth pop sound. The next number is When the Scream Subsides. Uh, this one continues the dark undercurrent of the album. It's a wave rock song, a sort of Gary Newman light. And this tune is about, well, again, that's not really clear. It might be about a relationship falling apart, or maybe there's something more sinister going on. We Came to Dance is next. This was the final single taken from Quartet, but in my opinion it's one of the weaker tracks on the album. The melody, uh, to be honest, is nothing to write home about. It's a rather forgettable synth-pop, again with a melancholic or slightly darker edge to it. The follow-up Cut and Run has more of an 80s rock edge to it. Again, the band manages to create an ominous atmosphere despite playing a slightly weird pop tune. Supposedly, this song is about suicide. You certainly cannot accuse Ultravox of dishing out shallow boy meets girl lyrics. The album's finale is the song in brackets we go an up-tempo track which features a tribal drum break from warren can adding a very nice touch to um, this song it's not the best ultra wax you'll ever hear but makes for a very solid closing track Quartet represents the poppy end of the new wave spectrum in a nutshell. It's not a masterpiece of an album, but nicely represents the cold yet catchy 1980s synth pop scene. It made it to number 12 in the UK charts, but didn't chart, or at least not very highly, in the USA like most of the British New Wave acts during that time. Personally, I'd say this is one of the better Ultravox albums, so if you feel the urge for some glossy yet somewhat artsy 80s pop, give this one a listen. And if you return without injury, maybe we'll see each other in another video.